So here's what I've done. I took the ground wire completely out of here. And it was on this mechanism. Pushed in. You've got to press in both sides. Squeeze them in. And then that will slide out the front. You might have to take the set screw. This is all plastic. You might have to take the set screw completely out of it to pull it out. And then the uh, on the clamp side it just had a bolt. A little bolt and a nut and a ring fitting that the wire was here's the wire screwed to the or clamped to the uh, to the clamp. So just take that off and then you can slide the wire completely out of the machine. And it is six foot of wire, eight gauge copper, which is good. That's good wire. Then the rest of these parts right here are my DINs connector. And I got real lucky with this. This is the design of this DINs connector. I don't know if you can see that. I guess I'll have to review the video, but it's got a circle with a little indicator point on it, a little nub right there. And look exactly like the hole that that other adapter came out of. And it fits in there perfectly. So from the outside it'll look like that. It's going to look, I won't have to do any metal work whatsoever on the case. That'll fit right in there just like that. Then on the, and, and this DINs goes in here. On the inside of the case, this cap goes on it. I can get that little mark lined up. That sets on top of it. And I'm missing it. It's laying here someplace. There's a lock washer that goes on there and then this screws on. And it clamps the whole thing together. Then what you'll have is from the outside you'll have a DINs plug. So you can connect and reconnect wires. So that's what I'm going to use to connect my ground. And then on the back side you've got just a bolt with a washer and a lock nut. That goes through your eye on your wire through this and you can just screw that to the back. Anyway I'll show you how all that goes together when I get to that point but right now I'm making I'm making some of these connectors. I don't want to use these if I don't have to. They're a little big for this smaller wire. But what I'm taking is just a piece of uh, quarter, I think it's quarter inch. This came off of a ice maker or for a refrigerator or something like that. I don't know. I finally got smart and took sandpaper and polished the outside before I cut any more. But I'm cutting them into one inch pieces. And those are going to be my connectors. I'll show you as I get to doing that how it's going to go together. But it fits perfectly on this wire. Just perfect. And then that will be soldered on. I'll take a hammer and smash the other end flat. And drill a hole in it so it turns out to be a connector like these. i got to make about five or six more of these. Just a hacksaw and and uh, cut them out and then run some sandpaper down through there to clean them up because I'm going to solder them on. So here's what the first one looks like. Slid, slid the piece of copper on the wire, soldered it, then I smashed the tip flat so the wire goes up to here so it didn't smash very tight right there and drilled myself a hole and then that's going to connect my wires. I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink over it first up here as far as I can get it and then uh, screw it onto the bridge rectifier and do 
four or five more of those. Well, I've got the main transformer, main leads coming out of it, connected to the bridge rectifier with some of that six gauge cable that used to be the grounding cable for this Harbor Freight welder. I've got a lead that I made out of the quarter inch copper piping connected to this wire used to be connected to the transformer but now it's just free and it will connect to my uh, to my capacitor bank so I put an end on it an end on it and it's just dangling at the moment putting these capacitors in here has turned out to be quite the challenge looking back on it I think having just one single capacitor with a large capacity would be the easiest way to go about connecting all of this but since I've already purchased this package of three I actually purchased three I, I purchased these three big ones they're each one of them is 22,000 microfarads they just threw in this little one which is a 4,700 microfarad they threw it in the package so I'm kind of taking a big gamble here with all this work I don't have any idea if any of them are any good I'm just trusting the people that I bought it from a loud truck going by here I'm just trusting that the people I bought it from didn't rip me off so <laughs> it's an awful lot of work on a gamble but I'm this deep into it now I'm gonna stick with it and we'll see if they work worst case scenario if they don't work or if one of them is bad I'll have to pull them off of here try to determine which one it is or multiples put in one single capacitor or just bypass capacitors altogether which I don't want to do the capacitors are going to smooth out the arc so since this is just one big experiment I'm going to continue with it as it is and we'll see what happens so getting them packed in here has been a real challenge I'll show you a little bit later when I get them put in here how I'm setting it up but it's it's just been a lot of work and a big challenge I do have my small DINs connector mounted in the hole there so that that part worked out just fine and ultimately these two leads are the DC side positive and negative DC they're going to come down and connect to my capacitor bank and then from the capacitor bank the negative will go to this one which happens to be the uh, the cable that goes out to the gun and the positive will connect to the DINs which will then become my ground clamp or work clamp so let me show you this contraption that I've cobbled together. I've got positive, positive, and the bottom side of this one is positive. It's critical if you're using multiple capacitors to make sure that you get them connected with the proper polarity. Then somewhere on this bank I've got to connect one of these resistors. I'm just going to solder it between the the positive and the negative to one of these resistors I still need to do that but this is going to lay inside there on the bottom and it's kind of a real trick to get them tucked in there but I've got three of them connected here and then this one is going to set somewhat like this and these two leads will connect to it I know it might seem confusing at this moment but it's been I can't just stack them all in there and connect them because the way uh, the way the the room that I have available so I've had to do this so I've created two bus bars using this 
same copper piping smashed it down drilled the ends out made it to where I could connect to these capacitors and then this little one as well and covered what I could of the exposed wire or piping copper pipe with uh, heat shrink and then since this is going to lay down in there like this I had to have a way to connect them to this particular one which will actually be standing up and then ultimately the wires will come to this one from the bridge rectifier and then also depart from this one going to the torch lead and to the ground it's been it's just been quite a chore since I'm making all these things by hand out of this copper piping and making my own leads and everything else it's been pretty pretty time consuming let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope that it actually works <laughs> if not then I'll go back to square one and figure out what to do next from that point but I'm gonna give it a whirl and we'll see what happens this will give me a total of 70,700 microfarads between these four capacitors I don't know if that's the right amount or not I see people saying the more the the more you have the better I've also read posts where people are claiming that the more capacitors that you have in parallel the better so I don't know I honestly don't know guys it's a, it's a big experiment so it should be definitely worth watching to see how it turns out I'm probably a few hours away from getting this all tucked inside there I'm going to be using high temperature hot glue and the reason I chose to do that to glue this in to the to the base of the uh, welder is that can easily remove that with rubbing alcohol if you put I don't know if you know this here's a tip for you if you put rubbing how alcohol like with a q-tip applicator on a hot glue joint the hot glue will come right off of there it won't leave residue or anything else and it'll be real easy to pull this out I was going to use 3m double sided tape but that stuff sticks crazy good and if if it needs to come back out it would be a nightmare to try to rip these capacitors out of there so the, I'm going to use that hot glue so in the next video it'll be my third video of this particular series I should be real close to having these all mounted in there with all the cabling hooked up and then I'll just give you the best view of the work that I have done it's hard enough for me to wiggle this around and get it crammed in there let alone trying to catch that on a video so that's how I'm going to decide to do it I'll show you the finished the finished product of having all these crammed in there but they're basically like this is the bottom of the welder those are laying right across the bottom and then this one's going to tuck right in next to them upright connected to these two leads and then my DINs connector going through the front of the welder box is right is located right here so I need a lead to come out of here into it that lead that's coming right here that's already connected that one will come out and connect to the other side anyway hope that all makes sense it's it's pretty uh, pretty simple but in this case I've made it completely complicated and confusing by having four different sized capacitors it's just it's been a challenge should be fun I'm ex anxious to get it put together and get this all crammed in there and see how it looks and then the big test and I'm going to turn it on in front of you probably not on the next video but the one to follow that I'll be ready to fire it up and we'll see what happens if you like the videos guys give me a thumbs up if you're new to this channel and you like this kind of stuff consider subscribing and don't forget to uh, 
hit the bell if you want to be notified of, of whenever I post new videos. Thanks for watching the videos, guys. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.